I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And I'm JT Timmons. I couldn't find the camera for a second. <laughs> I was like, and oh, I'm uh, JT Timmons. I was afraid Timmons you forgot who you were. <laughs> I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> it's okay. Who might I be? That's Patrick. Oh. Yeah, Patrick. Patrick. And, and Jingles. Jingles. Oh. Armed now. Uh, for I those of you who are just do. listening, we have a small... Uh, Harlequin, glass face, ceramic face doll with a sword now, uh, mm-hmm. carrying a sword. Yeah, that Chris got for his birthday. Yeah. He has sword, tiny sword. Tiny sword. Tiny sword. So now Jingles stole, I don't even know how he did it. He stole one. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he he possessed me to give it to him. He said, I really want that sword. And I was Bring like, me the sword. <laughs> All right. So, um, today we have a Q&A for y'all, cool. Maddie, uh, We'll make the announcements real short, but yep. basically we're going to the Conjuring House and become a pair junkie for um, all your Conjuring House needs on January 25th, 2024. We'll be going to the Conjuring House in Rhode Island uh, in the bitter cold. Um, we are going to be doing a multi-part episode series leading up to the Conjuring House, and uh, it's going to be super fun, and we're lit, and Pair Junkies, we are going to live stream for them nonstop, mm-hmm. so all that good stuff. Yeah, and JT Excellent. might turn 30 in the car drink We're hoping, we're hoping he'll make it, make it to, to At 5.05 a.m. We are taking bets, though. The bets are on. There's a 10 to 1 chance that he will make it. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. good. But Those we, are good odds. But if you bet against him making it, you could walk with a lot of cash. We will have <laughs> a getaway hotel, though. We are, if, we are getting a getaway hotel. <laughs> if in case we uh, do not make it through the night. Because there's always the off chance. I have faith in us that we'll be fine. We're yeah. definitely not leaving. It was $1,500. Yeah. <laughs> JT's like, I I'm. Stay, a demon could stand right in front of me and say, you're going to die tonight. And I'd be like, great. Let me get this on film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's big talk for a small room in Savannah, Georgia. Mm-hmm. When we were there, might be a different tune. Yeah. It will not. <laughs> when, the, when the broke neck lady comes at you and is like. Mm. The syphilitic broke neck lady. Yes. We might add. Yeah. I didn't know about all that now. What? <laughs> we'll be discussing a lot of this uh, in upcoming episodes because uh, leading up to The Conjuring House, mm-hmm. we're going to be doing deep dives into The Conjuring House, The Conjuring lore, all of it. Uh, maybe we'll even do like a movie review oh, of, yeah. of The Conjuring oh, yeah. movie. I'm currently reading um, Andrea Perrin's um, oh, yeah. book right now yeah, um, she's in preparation. Me. Yeah, it's interesting. I just lay in her lap like a lap dog and she just reads it. Yeah, because JT refuses to hold a book in his face. Um, and well, so- no, I read the news. That's what I do. I read, it, I read Associated Press. And, and we'll, 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 we'll discuss all of this in, in depth. I'm yeah. realizing that we could easily start right now and right. deep dive into it. <laughs> but um, yes. yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll reserve that. Off. We'll hold off oh. for, for episodes in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're a Patreon, there'll be exclusive episodes uh, for, for just podcast listeners. We'll definitely Thank be doing you know. mm-hmm. uh, some examinations of the, of the lore and, and the history of the Conjuring oh, yeah. House. Yeah, and if you're trying to get all those live streams where you're like literally like a fly in the wall, um, because it's really expensive to go to the Conjuring House. It and, is. You know, so it's like, and, and not everybody has access to that. So, um, you know, if you're trying to do that, become a para junkie. So right, can, for the price of a, a para junkie uh, subscription, you come with us because yes. we'll be doing live streaming. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, real fast, uh, before before I get into the q and I saw a ghost. And I waited to tell you. What? Um, yeah, I know. I've never seen ghosts like that unless it was the, the little the little boy ghost at the end of the hall. Um, but is it doing it again? 
No, no, no. I'm, okay. I, I step back to, All right. I'm like, to, I'm to, to listen. I'm making microphone. myself comfortable. <laughs> yeah, um, I saw a ghost. From what I think, what I think is a ghost. Um, it was. It was yesterday. I was on the couch. You were in the bathroom. I think you were cleaning, um, and I was. Uh, I was getting the book ready because you're about to read it um, to me, and I saw out of the my peripheral vision this like it was like a brownish. Uh, tan thing just move and i thought at first it was like a car outside like a glare or something mm-hmm. but i it definitely wasn't it was like actually in the living room um there and i almost called you out to like see if there was anything there because like you know she, if you don't know madison like you know sees goes on command um uh, but uh <laughs> like like literally just like anything um and i was just like that was most likely an entity right there in front of the couch. Like, I'm not surprised. It was, it was. It looked a little like an older gentleman. Oh, you saw Jim. I I don't know. No, that makes, I don't know what makes that sense. Saw. Jim's still all all over the He's house. A so. It was creepy, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Well, let's not do this." Oh, good. Um, I'm glad you met Jim finally. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So that was the first thing. Anyway, all right. Here we go. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. All right. This comes from Branzino underscore then a bunch of numbers, 129060. Uh, Para Junkie here. I'm so excited to watch you guys investigate the Conjuring House. Wee. I'm on Pacific time, so I asked off of work to attend the live stream. Yay! Yay! Nice, nice, very cool. We don't require you to take your PTO, but if you do it, we love it. We, <laughs> we appreciate Join it us. fully. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask what each of you are excited about. Mm. Um, Debria is, of course, included in this class. <laughs> so, She's excited uh, about coming home. I, yeah. I read this because I vet the questions, obviously. When I read this, uh, Debria said, going home after. Yep. <laughs> you called it. Yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, okay. So that's hard. Um, I think it's just clarify. Uh, I'm excited for clarification of all the stories that I've heard about the Conjuring House. That's what I'm looking forward to is getting an in-person, in-depth experience with it. Because it's just like, it's one of those houses that I have, I mean, everybody's obsessed with it. You know, it's like, I've read so many things about it. I've heard so many stories about it. I've watched people's live streams of them doing the Conjuring House, but it's like, I just feel like it's gonna be different Mm -hmm. when I actually am there. And so, excited to see some creepy looking entities um i love that that's cool i mean if i'm gonna go there i want to see the broke neck lady like that's dope yeah. you know not for her but like it's right. dope um also just uh excited to see what kind of theories we come up with um because i feel like every person who's gone there as of recently has taken something different from the house absolutely um so yeah that's definitely what i'm lit about i'm just excited to be there christopher yeah i think that it it boils down to why i'm excited to go to any site with history you know there's a there's something about being in the place so it's not necessarily that i'm i'm thinking oh i can't wait to get you know some kind of footage or some kind of experience it's that this is a place that had been uh, the focal point uh, for many, many years of one of the more phenomenal hauntings recorded mm-hmm. in American history. So it gives you this opportunity to be in the place, you know, being in the room where it happened, that really does heighten your comprehension and understanding of the stories that are being told. So um, I'm really looking forward to cementing what I had heard, what I had seen, what I have read into a physical place. Because those things, you know, um, we, I've, I've talked about before, like going to a place of great historic significance and just knowing mm-hmm. that something happened there. Just knowing innately, oh, this is the place where, you know, if you've gone to battlefields, if you've gone to um, – I went to Dachau when I was very young. If you've, if you've ever been to these places where history had uh, dug a trench right there, when you're standing in it, you know. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to to taking it out of my imagination and putting it in reality. For sure. Uh I would say I'm most excited about the nature 
Um, I'm a nature guy, and I'm excited to go out on the grounds, like in the dark. Maybe it'll be snowing. It um, probably will be. Yeah, and uh, you know, just it's kind of chance. like, yeah, I don't know, just vibing out there, and uh, that's gonna be pretty cool. With the dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> Frozen yeah. dead bodies. Frozen mm-hmm. dead bodies, and uh, just seeing what's up with that. And then I'm also very excited about uh, seeing Debris of Freak Out constantly. <laughs> that's going to be a, a you know key source of entertainment mm-hmm. for this documentary we're making. She also um, doesn't know that they don't have beds in this place, mm-hmm. and so she is going to have to. Well, they have beds, but they don't. Have, you can't sleep in them. Like you gotta. You gotta it's like a museum. Top. It's right. like it, it's, doing an overnight it, in a museum. It really is. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you don't really sleep. And That's technically, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. I, I imagine that when it comes time to to be drowsy and and near sleep, we should all be in the same room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're That's not true. doing any isolation sleeping. It's like, <laughs> Debra, go into the basement, take and a nap. And I'm <laughs> also excited about seeing the uh, the Wi-Fi speeds and seeing that they are. Good. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you contacted them about it at all? I'm going to. Yeah, give yeah. them a call because you know uh, it's very do. possible that all they need is base Wi-Fi to run their you know um, mm-hmm. their register. So they may not have high speed or, or know, anything close to that. There's nothing we could do either way because it, because we have a mobile hotspot. So yeah. it's okay. I'm checking that out, but um, everything's good. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So um, let's see. Next question. That was a great question. Thank mm-hmm. you, Brand Thank you. Zeno. Um, all right. And this one comes from Tyler Yu. Uh, Madison. Can you give me some insight on money spells? I've been trying to do my own because like most others, I need a little extra cash and nothing is working. I work two jobs and still don't get paid enough. I would love any insight you could give me on this. I don't think I'm doing it right. The inner web is too scattered. Okay, so money spells are tricky. Um, they, you have to be so, so, so specific of uh, what you are trying to gather. Um, because if you just give, like, so the problem with money spells is people will just say, I want $500. But they don't say where they want that $500 to come from. They don't say where that $500 is come, uh, going. Um, so the biggest issue is sometimes people will say, like, I want all this money. And then somebody passes away um, because they're like, you got an inheritance check for that exact amount of money or, um, you know, things like that. Um, I mean, the classic is that you take two bay leaves and you write basically um, on both of them the amount of money that you want, where you want it coming from and who you want it going to. You put one in like a sacred place, so like an altar, um, things like that. And then you take the other one and you keep it in your wallet and you carry that with you. Um, That's the classic way to do it. I mean, people make money bowls and stuff. Um, You know, that's pretty good. That's a little bit more in depth and things. But the the easiest way to go about it is the bay leaf method. Um, But you just have to be so, so, so specific. If you're doing it with intentions of desperation too sometimes it doesn't work um but also you if you're going to do it you have to be so sure that it's going to work with any spell if you even have like an inkling a doubt in your abilities um they don't tend to pan out the way that you want it to um because doubt is the worst thing you can do in witchcraft um you have to trust your abilities and so it's hard if it's like that's your like first spell ever and it's um usually you start with like protection magic or you do like little you know little here and there type spells just to get your footing and then you work your way up as you gain your trust in your um practice and things like that um and i don't know how far you are with your magic and things like that um yeah i had a friend who did a bay leaf um spell (laughs) she was so mad um she so she's from kentucky and so on her altar she has this little uh dish that has kentucky on it and so she did the bay leaf thing and she was like i want to you know pay off my debt and stuff so she's like i want like ten thousand dollars that would like help so much like i'd be able to clear like all the stuff i pay off my car yada 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 and so she puts the bay leaf with just ten thousand dollars on the kentucky dish on her altar and then she carries the other one with her two days later her dad calls her and he's like 
you're never going to believe what just happened. And she's like, what, what happened? She's, he's like, I won $10,000 in a scratch off. And it went to her dad who lives oh, in Kentucky. There you go. And she was so mad. She's like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's an interesting thing because, um, Right now, a lot of the rage is manifestation. Yeah. Um, and, and the baseline of manifestation is to be of the mindset and the positivity that what you want is already yours. You, you have to bypass it. You have to create the rule of attraction. You have to do these things. Um, and my, my wife did uh, a, a money manifestation asking for a very specific amount of money. Um, and within three days, it came to her. Mm -hmm. what? But that same day, an unexpected bill for two hundred dollars more than the amount <laughs> showed up as well, and I was like, "That's hilarious!" Because a, it worked, <laughs> and b, there was a balancing act going on. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. it, it's 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 you know, it, 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 your intent and your idea needs to marry with who you are at the moment, um, because you have to change. You know, uh, it, it, it's true. Desperation tarnishes what you're doing. Because you're obsessed with where you are and not where you want to be. Right. You have to inhabit the place you want to be, the place where you have the money, the place where you have the thing you want. You have to inhabit that place and then everything around you will bend towards providing it. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is kind of how spells work. That is how, kind of how manifestation works. But it, the truth of the matter is we are uh, planets with our own gravitational pull. We will pull to us what makes the most sense for the ecosystem we live in. So start really thinking of living an abundant life and being full of abundance. And ideally, nature will bend to your, uh, to your power. I would recommend over money magic right now. I mean, obviously, I know you're saying that you're financially feeling uh, the pressure and stuff like that. But I would recommend, it's going to sound weird, but doing a little bit of glamour magic. Mm. Um, I don't know what your gender... Glamour magic. Yes. Huh? So, so I don't know what your gender identity is, but... Glamour magic does not mean that you have to like put makeup on and like, <laughs> no. you know, um, like feel like a fabulous like movie star or something. It's about doing things that make you feel luxurious. Yes, absolutely. With intent to make you feel like I am bigger and badder than wealthy. I, yeah, yeah, I'm wealthy. I am healthy. I am all those. There's like a mantra on TikTok that people loved. It, that's in yeah. essence glamor magic. Right. And I would say, start with that to work your way up to feeling like, even if you're living in your means, you can still feel luxurious mm -hmm. and feel, yeah. you know, um, like you're living your best life with a budget and look into so. also, um, three, six, nine, 369 developed by Nikola Tesla, who came up with this equation through meticulous scientific and mathematics study. So the 369 method um, is basically a type of manifestation where you do something and you repeat it in uh, intervals of three, six, and nine. Um, there's lots of things you can look up on it. So just look up the 369 method. Uh, and it is also supposed to be about creating a path to what you want through the regimented uh, repetition mm -hmm. of the idea of what you want. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We'll I was going to say, and, yeah, and I was going to say, last point, people also swear by dream boards. Mm -hmm. If you put something up where you're visualizing exactly what you want mm -hmm. and then it eventually starts coming to you because you're putting it in And this is um, your... a common practice of New Year's. Mm -hmm. So since we're coming up to the New Year, huh. You know, uh, a great New Year's activity, even on New Year's Day, is to make a dream board mm -hmm. of the year coming up. So, mm -hmm. like, maybe on uh, New Year's Eve, make it a little ritual to, you know, cut out pictures of things that you, you want, you know, and, uh, and write out things that you feel are, um, are due you in the new year, what you really want. Um, because, yeah, dream boards are an excellent manifestation tool. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. All right. Um, all right, this next one was um, 
this next one was actually a comment mm -hmm. um, and was not sent in, um, but basically, um, Gamma R said, I need Patrick and Jingles merch. When is it coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It will come eventually. It's, coming. it's yeah. on its way. Yes. No, it's it's coming it's coming actually um it's coming actually pretty soon. I uh I, I just have to get to designing it, but I think it's a great like kind of like good versus evil type yeah. of deal. Like we were talking about it before that yeah, and there's evil. <laughs> Jingling. Jingling. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely do that. I I bet I, I I guess I could do some like photography and like do like some some Photoshop to it and make some. You could some probably cool yeah you could probably take photos of Jingles and Patrick and then put it in Photoshop and like make it into like trace it into like an illustration or something. Yeah, no, I could definitely could do that. That could be cool. Well, cool. All right. Oh, Chris <laughs> is going to use an app. I knew that was coming. We should. We should put Jingles in a Christmas outfit in December so he can be Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Oh, oh, boy. Jingles Bells. Jingles Bells. Jingles Bells. bells. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I do not like all him right. facing me at all. <laughs> He's all right. unnerving. Uh, so he is unnerving. I saved, the, I, saved, um, I saved one of the bigger ones for last. Okay. All right. Is everybody ready for it? Yes. Right. Here we go. Okay. This comes from Yolama T. Uh, I found this podcast from the TikTok video of Chris talking about Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm oh. so sorry, everyone. Yes. What a way to find us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't stop laughing. I work as a trauma nurse, so I need laughs often. Uh, it can be a very depressing job. Thank you for always telling fun and engaging stories, you two. Anyways, I'll stop blabbing and ask my question. <laughs> it needs a little backstory. A few months ago, I had a gunshot victim come in. Mm. I rather not say where I'm from because I'm sure a bunch of people listen to this podcast. Violence is pretty common here, but we're a tourist destination. And like most touristy places, the tourist district is very safe while surrounding areas aren't. Yeah. Uh, still don't want to discourage anyone from coming. Uh, anyway, disclaimer over. An elderly man came in and he was still alive and conscious, but very close to death. We couldn't do much more than we were already doing, but... Uh, make him as comfortable as possible through all the chaos happening around him. In his last few minutes, the man looked over towards the infusion pump, smiled, and said, Mama. Mm -hmm. And about four minutes later, he was gone. I was astonished because looking back at it, it looked and felt uh, like he saw, really saw his mother. Do you all uh, believe that people close to death can see ghosts or family members of mm -hmm. uh, ghosts of family members? Sorry for the lengthy story. You can cut out some of the fluff if needed. What? No. That wasn't lengthy at all. That's that no. great. Um, yeah. It, that's actually one of the most common um, ways that, because I've talked to There's a term, isn't there? There is. Um, Which oh I can't gosh. remember what the term is. There's an actual term for um, la final moments seeing, mm -hmm. um, but it, it escapes me right now. Regardless, though. Um, yeah, I've taught, I don't know why I've met so many people who have worked in hospice. Um I guess because we're in Savannah, you know, it's like there's quite a few older people. There's, yeah, I guess. And we are pretty preoccupied with death. So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but regardless, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. I've uh, I met a lot of people who've worked in hospice and um, a lot of them tell me that's how they know that yeah. one of their patients are going to be going is because about a week or so, usually, mm -hmm. um, before they start crossing that line they'll say like oh my daughter's coming to visit me or like mm -hmm. oh my daughter said she'd be back tomorrow or things like yeah. that or whatever it be right. um you know their loved one their husband you see it a lot with their husbands sure. or wives or um you know just you know people uh, somebody who's crossed over already um coming back to retrieve them and i think it comes from a place of Maybe it's a lot less scary to die if you see a familiar face of somebody who you loved in this life who's mm. there to help you through that process. Um, and so it's it's extremely common. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that it won't be the last time that you have that experience. Hopefully oh, sure. you don't have to. I mean, you're a trauma nurse, so you deal with death quite right. a bit, I'm sure. But, um, you know, it's I, I won't. 
I wouldn't be surprised if you had more experiences like that with patients who come in and, um, you know, see their moms or their just somebody. Grandmothers or loved yeah. ones who had passed over. Yeah, sure. Highly, yeah, yeah. You could fill a book with, with those stories. And, and many of them, you know, there's even the, um, you'll hear this a lot where a person's just clinging on to life until the last family member arrives yes. to say goodbye. You know, I think those things go hand in hand is, you know, that, that, that the spirit is so connective and connected that it, it maintains itself even, even in, in, in the most bleak of circumstances, uh, love reaches out and tries to facilitate these things. So it makes sense that the loved ones uh, who have passed on come to comfort and to guide and, uh, and that you wait for your loved ones to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, if you look into it in the belief system that there's soul families, it's, um, there's so many cultures that believe that it's like your souls are connected in some capacity and that you go through different lifetimes together. And so it would make sense if you have a soul connection to somebody that they would be coming to retrieve the other half of them, you know, to, be like, okay, we're, we're moving on, moving on to the next thing, getting prepared for whatever's next, you know. That is a nice thought. It is. It yeah. is nice. Um, people also see their pets sometimes. You, you can have soul connections to your animals even. Um, I've heard stories of people saying that, like, um, their grandmother was on her deathbed and she started talking about how her little – her little dog, you know, was coming up onto the bed and it's like, oh, Susie came to see me, you know, it's like, and Susie had died like 10 years prior or something. Um, I know that's how JT would want to be greeted is. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, Argyle. We've we talked about that, though. Yeah, is Argyle would come and throw a tennis ball at his dying face and it's that like. sounds about right. Like, throw it. <laughs> throw it. It'll be super wet. Yeah. yeah. It'll just like pop. Me Slimy, right gross. Yeah. Yeah. Her, um, so. So her question actually made me think about something that I don't think we've actually we've discussed, and it's something that's actually simple. So I'm like I'm I'm surprised we haven't discussed it on this podcast. Is are hospitals haunted? Oh yeah. Like how I guess so maybe we have how haunted are they? we have touched upon that have on new mm-hmm. yeah I mean but but n- yeah. we never just outright just outright ask hospitals are very haunted yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely uh, the thing about hospitals that probably garner the most haunt is the expenditure of emotion that happens, uh, especially in the trauma unit. Because uh, in the trauma unit, when people die, it's usually because they were shot or harmed or accident, you know, something that was unexpected and they are young and the people around them are so full of the knowledge of the life they could have led. And that expenditure of emotion is definitely enough to just, you know, paint the walls mm. and make it so that it's very haunted. Um, anyone who works in hospitals, please write us a ghost mail because some of the best stories occur in hospitals. People have just amazing stories. I always say that police are a wonderful source for ghost stories because they're they're trained to pay attention, you know, attention to details. Um, but hospitals are are classically haunted, absolutely. Well, because you got to think about it. Anybody who's in a ho- hospital who's not working there are going through one of the worst things that they could go through, absolutely. more than likely. Yeah. And so that's expending so much energy that even if they don't die, residual hauntings are rampant in things and like that. And hospitals are, are, are just literally the place where people die the most. Mm-hmm. You never really think about it, but uh, – <laughs> and – one of my favorite uh, sitcoms was Scrubs. Love Scrubs, oh, I love Scrubs. Uh, because mm-hmm. it, it it really balanced you know both comedy and tragedy really well. Uh, but there was an episode where they said the statistic was one out of three, one out of three patients that are not like in the emergency room, people who are mm-hmm. ad- admitted into the hospital, one out of three will die. A third of the people admitted wow. to a hospital will die, and I'm like that seems alarmingly high. But when you think of people who have to stay in a hospital, what they're dealing with, the illnesses that cause you to stay in the hospital, you know, if it's not post-op, if it's not, you know, emergency room, those people are dealing with some serious issues. And a hospital is a big building. One out of three die. And it's like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge volume. It makes you wonder, like, if hospitals – just like running hospitals, are they, are they just constantly collecting ghosts? Absolutely. You know? Oh, yeah. 
Yes. Uh, uh, famously, abandoned hospitals and old hospitals are sometimes the favorite places for ghost hunters. You know, people people will flock yeah. to an old abandoned hospital, and it's because so many spirits have passed, and many spirits passed in pain and agony, mm -hmm. uh, with full awareness of their impending death. You know, uh, full of fear. To me, the emotional atmosphere of a hospital definitely lends itself to ghosts. I actually saw a ghost in Walter Reed Hospital, and I remember very clearly being terribly shaken by it but knowing that well of course mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well, well of course of course the, there are going to be ghosts in this hospital yeah. well i mean it's, it's especially with hospitals that were older and are now abandoned who had like syphilis units or mm -hmm. tuberculosis units oh, or things like that those are so haunted because what traumatic ways to die <sighs> i mean um and especially like in the 40s 50s where a lot of the experimentation on people who had these diseases were terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. you know, what they were trying to do to get ahead of it and to stave it off. And in some cases, like we have um, the Oatland Island uh, Wildlife Preserve was actually uh, a syphilis hospital uh, in the 30s, 40s. We have a whole mm -hmm. other episode on that. Yep. If you want to yeah. hear about it. Um, and they actually allowed the syphilis to run its course on a lot of their patients mm -hmm. as Yikes. as a uh, study as to the full effects of syphilis on human beings. Mm -hmm. And it was horrifying to the nth degree. Yeah. And it, you know, a lot of that was because they didn't have proper um, treatments to begin with. They could have maintained it, but they... Yeah, some of the stories that you hear it coming out of it, you're like, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> and now you can go in there and pet a possum. You can. Yeah. You can give a possum a so, big old kiss. Yeah. Kiss the possum. Also, just a, just a um, disclaimer about possums. Um, don't ever kill possums because they... Eat ticks. They mm -hmm. eat ticks. They eat 5,500 ticks. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And possums, they do appear to be giant rats that are very scary when you mm -hmm. corner them. I love them. But they're actually kind of sweet. Yeah. <laughs> They're they're little and they're cute little rats. <laughs> Although, my poor mom, we used to have a swimming pool when I was growing up, and a possum had fallen into the pool, and my oh, mom's God. trying to save the possum. Oh no! And so she's she's got this thing, and it's a rainy night, and she's got yeah. you know the net to pull the possum out. And as she's pulling it up, she's looking at the possum, and it looks like it's covered in tumors, and the tumors are moving, and she's just Baby. like. They were babies, yeah. but she could, you know, there's no way yeah. to tell. She just looked, and so she like catapults because it's it was so disturbing to her. And, yeah, <laughs> my mom was so guilty about catapulting the possum. Well, that's like the saddest thing, total side tangent, but really sad death thing that possums do is um, yes. it's really, I don't know why. They naturally have this instinct, but when the mom, di if a mom dies and the babies are left abandoned, baby, the babies have an instinct to just go drown themselves. And so that happened one so time. So bizarre. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. Um, that happened one time when I was growing up in Florida. Um, we had a possum die underneath our house. Um, we, we lived in rattlesnake country. It happens, you sure. know, like it probably got bit by a diamondback or something, but, um, my poor dad came out one day and there was just a bunch of dead baby possums in the pool. Yeah. Um, wow. yeah. And he's like fishing them out, oh, you no. know, um, but one of them didn't do that. And yeah. it was so scared. It went up to, up the porch oh. and um, my dad is a big like barbecue guy. So he always would have like bags and bags and bags of like wood chips and stuff on the porch. And I came out one day to feed the stray cats and I heard this little squeak and rustle behind the bags of wood chips. And I look, I pulled it back and there's just this itty bitty baby possum, oh, baby possum. Um, behind the, uh, the wood chips. And it was so scared, but it was so little that it couldn't like make noises properly. So it was like, <coughs> like showing its teeth at me. And it's like, I'm scary. I'm like, you're so Rawr. cute. <laughs> I named it Eliza. It didn't Aww. live very long, but. Aww. Eliza the possum. It's got dark. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, you nursed it back to health, and you had a pet possum, and I wish. it went out no. into the wild. No, That's how you end a story, no, Madison. No. <laughs> but the point is, Eliza was the ultimate possum because she defeated the she instinct. She defeated the instinct, sure. You know, she there was like, go. that's dumb. That's dumb. That I'm, I'm going to live in the wood chips. And so she just, until she passed, she just ate cat food all the time. That is uh, a very see, actually, thin silver lining. Eating, yeah. very eating, thin. eating cat food is, yeah. it's got to be better than eating ticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. 
Um, just real fast, going back to uh, going back to the hospital. One other thing that I was thinking <laughs> oh, right. about. Yeah. Well, what you know, it's super interesting to me. I don't know why, uh, but one of the other things I was thinking about is how what. But my last question here is how. Um, what do y'all think about spirits leaving hospitals to go haunt places that they want to haunt, like their house or something like that, uh, versus ones that maybe get stuck in the hospital? That's an excellent question because, and I think we might have, Thanks. we might have, we might, we might have touched upon it before, but a single spirit can haunt multiple locations. Mm-hmm. The, Wait, really? the, yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because uh, you're talking about residual haunting, you're talking about time displacement, you're talking about all kinds of things oh, that yeah. cause a spirit to allow it to haunt multiple locations. Uh, being at the place you died, very common for a spirit. And then we think, well, then the ghost walks to its home. No. At the home, there is enough energy and enough love and enough things to manifest an aspect of the spirit. Now, it's not, it, it, that does not mean it's, it's purely residual. It can be an intelligent haunt, but it is utilizing, feeding upon, and manifesting through memories, love, and the, uh, the energy of the place. Hmm. Um, uh, we, we, we had talked about you know, the fact that living people can be haunting places, you know, places in your life that were of immense significance, oftentimes trauma, but sometimes joy, your spirit – can resonate in that area and people might encounter something and they're like, I see a little boy, I see a little boy. It turns out that little boy was you when you're 10 years old. Mm-hmm. That's possible. It's, it's because what we understand of haunting is the idea that I killed the body and then this spirit that wore the body like a suit and walked around in it is the only thing that represents who we were in, in life. Mm-hmm. But the truth of the matter is everything that we influence, everything that we touch, everything that we do carries in it our energy. And there are reserves in certain places where that energy is strong enough to manifest as an aspect of ourselves. It, let's also not negate the fact, too, that there are some people who live in the hospital for a very long time and mm. they see the, that hospital. It's sad, but they see that hospital room as their home. That's very true. Too. Um, it's not uncommon for people to find comfort. It's, it sounds strange if you've never been through it, but there are people who find comfort in being in a hospital oh. um, when they've been very sick for a long period right. of time and they live because it eases their pain. Exactly. Um, so I could see why some spirits choose to not want to leave because they lived so many years of their life in pain. And this was the only place that ever gave them comfort and attention and try to help them. Also side note, a ghost will follow something that interests them. So if you're, you know, uh, of interest to a spirit, that ghost can follow you from the hospital. And it may have nothing to do with you. It may have nothing to do with anything in your environment. But it was like, that person's fascinating. I'm going to follow that person. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that is the plot to Insidious 2, mm-hmm. is that the ghost of the, the, the main scary ghost followed... Um, Patrick Wilson's character home, you know, yes. attached mm-hmm. to him from yeah. the hospital. Yeah. That is not uncommon. And uh, you know, the classic stories are um, going walking by a cemetery. You know, uh, and you hear this superstition: don't whistle in a cemetery. It's it's a common thing. And it, and you and it, you imagine that it's you know, be respectful is the is the message. But the truth of the matter is, you gain the attention of a spirit. You're whistling. The spirit sees you, and may follow you home. And then you've got a new best friend. Beware of the hitchhiking ghosts. Beware of the hitchhiking ghosts. Yeah, yeah. This is a theme. Mm-hmm. We've stumbled upon a theme. Yeah. Hitchhiking ghosts. The hitchhiking yes. ghosts. Well, cool, cool, cool. Well, all righty, y'all. Thank you guys so much for sending in your questions. Uh, if you have a question that you want to ask us, you can use ghost mail, um, which is our email. So it's ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Uh, do just try to put question in the subject if you're going to send that um, so that I can, you know, differentiate between the ghost mails and the questions. Um, so that way, you know, everybody's getting their and their answers to whatever it is. Um, but yeah, cool. Thank you guys so much. And my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And stay spooky, y'all. Yeah.